Welcome to the Suicide Prevention Show. We are here to make suicide, especially teen suicide, a thing of the past. And the ride does get more interesting from here. In this episode, we're gonna be talking with Dr. Leslie Austin about one of the most challenging topics in the world, how to deal with difficult people. So I'm going to ask you to go to the chat if you have ever had to deal with a difficult person. Please drop that in the chat now. If you're hearing this on the recording, just give up. Oh yeah. And we're going to bring it on in. So pop it in. Let us know. We want to make sure that this is the right topic for you. I know it's the right topic for me. And Dr. Leslie, if you would go ahead and bring yourself on to the show, We'll get this party started. Hey, Later to you. good morning. How are you? Good, thank you. Speaking of live shows and things happening, uh, apropos of our topic today, distractions and such, I'm coming to you from uh, part of Florida, and we are suddenly having an amazing, very loud thunder and lightning storm with pouring rain and sunshine, and I have a dog who, as he's been getting older, is stressed by thunder. So he just broke open the door to this room and is sitting next to me panting. So we're going to talk about how to deal with his stress as well as everybody else's. <laughs> how to deal with difficult situations is very apt. So if you see me leaning to the side, I'm just patting him for a moment because he's quite nervous. Poor guy. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> this, this is awesome because it could not have been more perfect that your dog decided and that Mother Nature decided to give us a framework for the conversation that we're having today. Actually, my long history with dogs, and this is not a joke, uh, was very uh, helpful to me in learning how to work with a lot of my executive clients. I work with individuals, but I also have a long track record of uh, coaching with executives and peoples and companies and particularly the really difficult people, the narcissists and the bullies, because they're too good to fire and they're too terrible to keep. So that's where I come in. And um, it was because I had rescued a little dog who had been run over on the highway named Henry mm -hmm. and very severely injured and uh, brought him, nursed him back to health. But he, he had been abused and he was a fear biter. He was a Chihuahua Fox Terrier blend. Ooh. And he was adorable, but he couldn't decide which half of him was more macho. And so he was aggressive and very afraid. And it was by learning how to work with him, to connect to him from heart to heart, and positive reinforcement, and understanding the world from his little body's perspective, that I began to learn to, how to change those difficult behaviors, how to negotiate with them, and how to be with them. And that literally transferred right over into working with my clients and informed my understanding of a very different perspective on difficult people than psychology and all the stuff out on YouTube that you're going to watch has. I have a different perspective. Well, that's why you're on this show. Yeah. This show has a different perspective on everything. Yeah. That's, the only, that's the one thing we can pretty much guarantee anybody yep. listening or watching. Mm -hmm. We're going to come with a different perspective. Yeah. You said something really interesting. You said negotiate with the behaviors but before that you said control the right. behavior right and there is so much rhetoric so much conversation around mm -hmm. you can't control anybody else and if you do try to control them that's manipulative and wrong so yeah. we're going to deep dive into that point and people can pop questions into the chat and we'll address as many of them as we can yes so, and just so people know i'm not going to read the chat i'm going to let you pick the question. Right. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, there's a very big difference between control and negotiating and guiding. And in fact, you can't control anybody else. And you can't really even control yourself technically in the true <laughs> meaning of the word, because once you have an emotion, you're already in it. It's too late. But what you can do is understand your own emotions and reactions as information that's really important. So what's really going on and what is that emotion telling you you need or want? And then you can negotiate your way to a better way of getting that need met. And that's a principle that I work with, for example, when, some, when 
uh, a big executive is sent to me or an individual comes to me and says, this person is really difficult um, or they are the person who's difficult. What I want them to do is go into the emotions that triggered that behavior and ask themselves, what is this feeling really wanting? What is it? I'm already angry. What am I angry about? What's the result that I really want? And if the answer is, I want to crush that guy, that's not the real answer. That's not coming from the deep place of what do I really need? What do I really need? I need this situation fixed. How does it need to get fixed? This has to happen. Okay, let's find a better way to make this happen. <laughs> All right, we're going to make this into a story. We're going to get it out of the concept and we're going to deal with Henry. Only we're going to deal with a two-legged version of Henry. Right, okay. So, so let's talk about Henry. Yeah. When, when we put the label of difficult person on someone, what are we really talking about? Yeah, in our culture, listen, if you go to YouTube, the word narcissist is being thrown around a lot these days. And for understandable reasons. And this is not a political statement, but the president, the current president of the United States has a behavior profile that exemplifies extreme narcissism. And so do a lot of other politicians on both sides of the aisle, a lot of popular stars, movie stars, music stars, sports stars in particular. What there's are the almost a hero. There's, a, there's almost a hero worship of this yeah. narcissistic profile. Well, and we call I'm them stars. I'm going to pause you long enough because mm -hmm. we call them stars, but can you give three characteristics of extreme narcissism so that everybody's on the same page? Absolutely. Narcissists put themselves first. Okay. It's their way or no way. They uh, live in a win or die world. You're with them or you're against them. Okay. And, and uh, they, well, there are a lot of characteristics that you need to know when you are with them, you always feel less than or manipulated or gaslighted, and we'll come back to gaslighting and what that means in a moment, because it's very, very important. And that is the most important factor that leads to extreme depression and a sense of powerlessness, when, which is something we'll address. Yeah. Being gaslighted, being told that what you know and what you feel and what you believe is either not true or not important. And that's so debilitating, especially to young people, especially when someone is in their teens and they're trying to grow emotionally and they're unhappy or they're struggling and they're getting messages maybe from family or friends or the culture or school or wherever that their feelings are wrong, that they should be a different way, that they should be better, that they should be happy. All of that is extremely destructive because what needs to be asked is what are you feeling and what do you need? And let's find a better way to get that need met if possible. Let's teach you how to take care of yourself so that you don't feel debilitated. Okay, so I'm going to pause you again. Yeah. I'm going to pause you again because yeah. those are really important questions and they are powerful questions that yeah. people can start asking and changing the conversation, yes. even with a difficult person or even with anybody. Yes. So the, the first one was, what are you feeling? Right. What are you, and then what are you needing? Yes. What needs to change? My goodness, if we started asking those questions and listening without judgment, all of our relationships would improve. Yes, many of them would. Now, you don't ask the difficult person, the narcissist or the bully, what do you need? Because they'll trash you. <laughs> they'll just... Oh, them, darn! I will shot all over you. <laughs> you can't ask that question. But, oh, but, sorry. Delete that last part, people. Okay. You're asking the non-narcissist that question, or you're asking yourself. Oh, when good. You, okay. When you're feeling badly. With, I'm going to get to, in a couple of minutes, I'm going to get to certain tools and certain sentences that you use with a narcissistic person or a bully, you can call them a bully, okay. um, that will help you negotiate literally your way, because that, that's what it's about. But we need to understand that if you go to YouTube and you, you, know, you search for narcissism, there are a bazillion videos out there. And most of them, in my personal opinion, and I hope you don't mind my being a little bit controversial, are garbage because they're coming from psychology and they're coming from diagnosis and they're coming from the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual, the DSM, which is the Bible of Diagnosis for the Psychology World. And I have a real issue with that. And I'm a licensed psychotherapist, so I'm allowed to say this because I've studied it a lot. Yeah, I don't yeah. actively practice therapy anymore. I do a lot of coaching though. And the reason for that is 
those diagnoses are represented as medical diagnoses, like you have a broken bone, you're a narcissist. Yeah, like it's an observable work. set condition. Doesn't work that way. Those diagnoses are groups of behaviors. And in order to call somebody a narcissist, I don't remember the exact number, but it might be, you need to have five out of eight possible characteristics. So two narcissists sitting next to each other might have a different group of the eight characteristics. Oh, and wow. they might be from a different background and they might have had a different family situation and how you would deal with them would need to be completely different. And yet they have the same diagnosis and treatment quote unquote in traditional psychology for this kind of behavior is notoriously unsuccessful. Yeah. So okay. why is that? It's because we are not looking at the person who is difficult and going into their shoes and understanding what's going on with them. Those people secretly, and it is secretly because mostly they don't know this, are terrified. They are absolutely terrified of being controlled or manipulated or annihilated it's like a body animal instinct terror and it's very very primal it's a survival threat and they're in it almost all the time it comes way 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 back from childhood we're not going to go into that now but this person all of these behaviors we're talking about they don't know how to be different because it's a survival way of being for them okay and so they is, don't know it there this is just their normal it's their it's framework just, for living. We all have our frameworks for living. That's right. Most of us have a framework that can adapt. Right. They don't know any different. And they can only see you or any other person as an extension of themselves. So what they experience emotionally is, is this person aligned with me? Are they with me or are they against me? And there's no middle. Mm -hmm. Are they doing what I want? Are they making me happy? They can be with me. That's great because they're good for me. Are they opposing me? Are they disagreeing? Are they not with me? I have to get rid of them. I have to punish them or trash them or get rid of them. I have to show them I'm smarter and better. So what you experience when you're dealing with a difficult person, and narcissists are not the only kind of difficult people, but they're the biggest category in our culture right now. Mm -hmm. Reasons for that, which again, we don't have time to go into deeply, but... Um, All right, we're gonna we're gonna skim the surface then. Yeah. Right. So give me the in one sentence each. This is Henry. He's been born, and we know that he's gonna grow up and exhibit characteristics of narcissism. Right. Okay. So what's his life like growing up? His life growing up is um, in some way being very invalidated and being over controlled, not okay. being paid attention to, not being listened to. And so sometimes when someone is having troubles and isn't gotten or read, you know, really understood or connected to, they either can implode and get very depressed and feel like they're powerless and life is not worth it, mm -hmm. or they can turn into acting out and being a bully. I can do whatever I want and the heck with all of you. Okay, so and both of them are adaptation to, to the same stimulus. The same not being happens. met, not being connected to as mm -hmm. a living, breathing human being who has a right to feel whatever they feel. Our culture makes judgments about our emotions. And when we're suffering or struggling for whatever reason, I'm here to say nobody can tell you you have a right to those feelings or you don't. Nobody. Except we do. And you're Except right. We, does judge, all the time. we control, we write songs about big girls don't cry. Yeah. You know, we, we write songs about how other people are responsible for our emotions. You make me feel. You know, right. So this is a cultural meme and we're here to break that open and to say, hey, guess what? Everything that you've ever heard is dysfunctional <laughs> as far as how to live your life or how to deal with the difficult right. person. So the key phrase you just said is you make me feel. Mm -hmm. And when you want to deal with a difficult person, that is the law that you cannot use as a law. You have to observe that that is incorrect. So here's the principle. Nobody makes you feel, do, mm -hmm. say anything. You have the power to work with yourself and to choose how you will respond to what's being thrown at you.
that's the biggest challenge when you are in a relationship with a difficult person with this concept of gaslighting is because the first thing that happens is you start losing your ability, in my opinion, that, that I would see is that I would start losing my ability to own my own emotions right. because I'm being told what I'm to feel. Right. Ooh, I was right. raised by one of those. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, right. Uh, whoa, this is shocking. But you're here. I'm here. We can all survive this. Because you've paid attention and you've worked on yourself. Oh, and some, somewhere along the road, you decided not to make yourself wrong and not to buy into that you're defective or wrong or inferior or stupid or any of that stuff. And it takes a lot to overcome that. So yeah. how do we overcome that? What we do is when we are dealing with a difficult person, we have to remember that that difficult behavior in some bizarre way is not personal. They don't know how to be any different. Mm -hmm. They would be doing the same MO. They'd be doing the same behaviors, the same patterns with anyone they're involved in. And there are some personal things, comments and, and things because they're relating to you at that moment, but they'll be that way with everybody. So it's not that they've singled you out. So, right, so that, that gives you a really, one really step deep. of distance, one step of distance on what they're doing. So it helps you think about, well, look at their behavior pattern. Look at what they do. What do I want to do here? It gives you that little bit of breathing room to realize it's not about me. It's about them. So with Henry, my dog, it wasn't about me that he would growl you know, when he barely knew me after traumatic surgery. It was about, he was terrified. He's a little guy and I'm this big person. And he'd just been through a big surgery. So imagining what his terror was like, I knew to be very still and very quiet. And I knew to sit near him without approaching him and let him come to me. And eventually he did. And then I had some snacks and he came and he, on his terms, he came mm -hmm. to trust taking a snack for me. Long story short, over the years, we became great friends, and I even uh, coaxed him, and he wanted to learn to not chase after people's heels when they were leaving the door, <laughs> try and bite their heels, or bark terribly when they came in. Now, how did I do that? I didn't punish him for the bad behavior when he'd be barking in like a crazy dog when someone was coming through the door for a session. I held him a treat, and I threw it across the room. I gave him something he wanted that was a better choice. Okay. So go for the better choice. And Basic after a behavior. while, behavioral, totally. After a while, when the doorbell would ring, he would run to the other end of the room and wait. <laughs> there you go. And then eventually, he would run to the other end of the room and then he'd come back, but he wasn't biting their heels because in his mind, going to the other end of the room meant he was good. So he was calm and he didn't have to bite somebody. Wow. All right, huge, now huge shift. So Henry- That's with a dog, with yeah. a person. You want to not play their game. You want to not answer the content of what they're saying if you can help it. You want to not play, you want to not play into their power game because they will win. So there are some ways that you can negotiate. Now, I, if, if people watching and listening want some of these tools, uh, they can go to my website. It's Leslie Austin, L-E-S-L-I-E-A-U-S-T-I-N.com forward slash gift. And they'll get a little, little pamphlet. Oh that yeah. That's a wonderful tool. With some of the, it's the Lion Tamers checklist and it has some of these tools in it that I'm going to describe. And it's really handy. And a lot of the feedback I get when people get this little guide is they start applying the principles and it really helps them get through it. It really helps them make progress. So some of the things I'm suggesting in here is that when you're dealing with an impossible person, you need to remember that they always want to win. These are the feelings. This is what you'll experience. This is how you recognize them. A difficult person, whatever kind of difficult person they are, they always want to win. They, it will feel like they always want to control everything and they will manipulate in the negative sense of the word. You get the feeling you're not being listened to. It's all about them always. They always have to be right. And here's an important thing. You can't say no. You can't say no, you're wrong because they'll go back and attack you. They'll get you for it. And that's not a good feeling. You can't win. And I'm, and I'm going to just pause for just a second. I'm going to say, 
it is totally instinctual on their part. It is not their fault. They are not aware of it and they cannot change it. Because I've talked with you enough that yeah. I know that this is what you, and it's like, wow, then I can relax because I don't have an expectation that they're going to change. Well, but here's the fun part. They do change, but not because you are changing them. They are changing in response to you changing yourself. And that's the most important key. You have the power to choose your own responses and your own reactions. You can shape how you respond in that kind of a situation. The less you attack them, oppose them, play their power game with them, and say the right kinds of sentences to make them feel like you are aligning with them. Now, mm -hmm. we'll get to that because you don't want to lie. So there are ways to say this. If yep. you don't say no, if you don't oppose, but you find ways to align somehow and hold your ground, but don't play the power game, gradually they begin to trust you because they interpret that as, oh, he or she is with me. I don't have to do that power game. They're, they're, they're mine. I've got them. We want them to think that because they'll calm down. And, but you need to know inside you that they can think anything they want. You know the truth about you. So when you That's respond more point. positively mm -hmm. and you own your own power as a human being to choose your right to respond any way you need to, other people will respond. Henry, my dog, responded and changed over time because I changed my reactions and my behavior to his aberrant behavior. So if I didn't hit him or punish him, there was nothing for him to fight back against. If I stayed very still, he could get calm because I wasn't all agitated. You when know, there's a calm, moment. He could then connect to me, but that's because I was modeling what I wanted. And you know, what I've seen happen is that if I'm with someone who, I call it high on the self-absorption scale. Oh, yes. Okay, yeah. so I'm with someone who's high on the self-absorption scale and I'm getting upset mm -hmm. and they will get super, super calm, but it's a power thing. I mean, they'll, they'll just like- 100% not, not at all respond. But you're, so you're not talking about that kind of shutdown calm. No. You're talking about being present. I'm talking calm. about being present and keeping your own sense of self and your own dignity and knowing that you don't have to play that game. You mm -hmm. can keep your own center. When you feel down or depressed or upset and somebody is manipulating you, you don't have to accept their story, which is that you deserve it. That's ridiculous. Nobody deserves to be treated badly ever. And All if right. you're committing an evil act or a wrong act, Yes, of course you need to be stopped, but that's a different situation. Right, we're not talking about a situation where you're doing something that's morally, ethically, legally right. improper. No. We're, we're talking about you're living your life, you're in a relationship with a difficult person. I see it as, you know, you have three options. The first one is leave right. you know, the difficult relationship. Mm -hmm. the, the second one is stay and struggle argue with who they are, argue with the reality and you will of lose. who they are. And you will well, lose. you're going to, you're going to suffer. Yeah. I mean, it's not, it's, yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, if you're arguing with the reality of who the other person is and how the other person is, you cannot, all right, I'll say it your way. You cannot win. Right. You know, you're, you're not ever going to get to a place of being happy in yeah. that relationship, but sometimes we have been miserable in relationships for so long that that's our comfort zone. Right. And so this is an invitation to a what if, even in a relationship with a difficult person, what if you didn't have to be miserable and they didn't have to change because you wanted them to change? Right. That will change in response to you yeah. changing. And um, part, of, part of what goes on in the dynamic here with a really difficult person, because they are very controlling and micromanaging and manipulative, and they tell you what you should be feeling or not, which is pretty hard, especially if you're a young person. It's pretty devastating to be told your feelings are wrong. You know, what do you do with that? Um, that, that person who is micromanaging you thinks that you are under their thumb. And they think they have the right to tell you how to be. And that's why they're that kind of weird calm. What you're doing is completely different from that. It's completely different from that. 
You need to learn, no matter what goes on outside, hold your center. And if you can't negotiate something in the moment, stay still, breathe, and get out without the scars if possible, and deal with it when you're away from it and calm. So sometimes when we stay in those relationships for a long period of time, it's not only our comfort zone, but it's because we have been brainwashed by the difficult person to think that we have no choice, to think that that's the correct way to be because that's how they want us. Because we're pleasing them by staying in a relationship that's not good for us and suffering and giving them their control. So they're kind of, it's a, it's a major head game. It's a dance and, and yeah. we can end up in these relationships and not even realize that that's the dynamic that's developing. Right. Until um, somebody wakes us up from our dream. Right. Usually it's an intervention from a friend or a colleague mm -hmm. or, or something. That's what it was for me. It was someone who said, does he always talk to you that way? Yeah. I went, what way? Right. Yeah. I mean, because right. so it's some of the phrases so gradually. I'm going to, this is a very famous graphic. I'm going to show it to you. This is about gaslighting. Gaslighting comes from a movie. It's originally a play in England, and then it was made into two different movies um, where a, I'll spare you the plot, but a man tries to convince a woman that she's going crazy because he wants to get to her inherited jewelry. Right. And so it would be like uh, you saying to me, um, please turn that light off. Leslie. And I look at it and I say, Jackie, the light is off. You say, no, it's not. What's wrong with you? Go turn it off. And I'm like, what? The, the lamp is off. No, it's on. Boy, something's wrong here. What's wrong with me? Now that's a very extreme example, but you get gaslighted or manipulated. You get told that what you're feeling and thinking is not real. It's not true. So this is a very famous graphic I'm going to show you. Ah, uh, there we go. Perfect. About what? gaslighting, yeah. all these kinds of phrases. Yeah. What does this sound like? And the things that they say to you are, you're overreacting. You need help. I never did that. You're upset over nothing. How Ooh. many teens hear this? You're confused again. Just calm down. You're too dramatic. What are you talking about? It's your fault. You twist things. Stop imagining things. Oh, I was just joking. Oh, that last one was is like a knife cut. It's always something with you. <laughs> really, I never yeah. said that. You twist things. It's this this kind of these are the things that people say to intentionally twist how you're feeling and thinking. And this these kinds of behaviors by difficult people are what drive people to very dark feelings and depression feelings of powerlessness and staying in relationships that are not good for them for years and years and years, which always makes me very sad that people do that because you feel so debilitated and confused and less than and inferior. So here's how you survive with your All dignity right. intact. Okay. There we go. Surviving with dignity intact. These I are like things it. you have to remember. Remember inside every bully is a person who's secretly scared and they don't know it. It's not your job to tell them. They don't want to hear oh, it. Oh, darn. Yeah. Well, if you would like to get attacked and crushed and manipulated back, go right ahead and tell them. Because you can't tell them anything. You cannot tell a difficult person anything that they don't know because they hate surprises. Because they need to be in control at every minute. Whoa, so whoa, whoa. if they that, don't know that's something. That's a big one. Right. So here are some of what I call the transition sentences that you have okay. to use. I'm, I'm going to pause it and say it again. Yeah. They hate surprises. Hate it even little micro ones. Oh my God. Well, that explains what happened on my former husband's birthday when I gave him a surprise party. Oh yeah, he'd hate that, even if it was spectacular. Oh, it did not turn out well. No. Well, I had no idea what I did wrong. Right. And now I get it. They, they just don't like to be surprised, period. It, they take everything as if you're saying, by the way, your fly is wide open. Huh? Yeah. That's, re that's the reaction, what you just did. Yeah. When you surprise someone, they take it as something terrible and embarrassing has just happened to them, and they've <sighs> been caught, and they don't know how to cope because they've just been really shamed. They take it as being shamed. Wow. Yeah. So when you say, uh, by the way... Um, you're 10 minutes late, they'll attack you. 
if they weren't paying attention to the time. It'll be my fault. Yeah, right. Okay. Right. All right. So now that you've taken us into the mess, by the way, if this is not something you've ever experienced to this extreme, what just, planet are you living on? Yeah. Well, <laughs> there's that or, and we're all guilty of doing these kinds of things in some way, especially if we're raising kids yes. because we want to help them. So we correct them and basically sometimes what we're doing is telling them they're wrong and disallowing whatever right. their experience is. So as a parent, what you can do there, and this is a challenge, I'm, I know this is a big challenge, but when you are, those times when you are able to do it, if you can do it more than not, that's a gift. When you are more able to do it than not, what you wanna do is guide your child or your young teenager and say, this is not gonna work out the best for you. I can see what's going on. Let me lay it out for you. And maybe you wanna think about how to deal with it differently. As I see it, your choices are this, this, and this. What do you feel? So you're guiding and teaching, but you're not saying, listen, you stupid, cut wow. that out, cut that out. It's no good, go do this. Because what you do when you do that, and I understand, I mean, it's so frustrating to be a parent. It's 24 seven for, you know, 20 years or whatever, or longer. And or it's longer. Yeah. <laughs> but, but when and if you can try to guide mm -hmm. as much as you are able, what you are doing is reinforcing the young person's sense of self, their sense of choice, their sense that they can figure out how to negotiate and pilot their way in life. And that's the greatest gift you can give them. Not the right answers, but the sense that they can find their own right answers. You don't have to know everything. As a parent guiding a younger person, it's not up to you to have all the answers and know everything. It is up to you to be the best guide you possibly can be and teach them how to choose and how to be aware when possible. And we're all human, so. Yeah. No. I mean, it's, it's about how to be a less difficult parent. Yeah. All right. So, so now take us back to, okay. we're in a relationship with Henry. We right. have discovered that Henry is a difficult person, mainly right. because we've noticed that we don't feel heard. We don't feel valued. When right. we're around them, we get confused. Okay. So remember they're, they're going to be scared and they don't know it. Don't tell them. Assume that you're going to be made wrong. So don't get all fussed about it. <laughs> it is just a fact. You will be made wrong. Get over it. Don't take oh, it personally. Clear expectations. Well, it's a behavior pattern. If you observe the pattern, you say, oh, it's that one. And you're already halfway out of it. And you realize they have to make you wrong because they have to feel like they're in control. They don't have a choice, whether you are wrong or not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they're not wrong because it's a control thing. Um, don't ever say no directly. Because okay, they what do we say instead? Back. What you say is, now, here are the transition sentences. You never want to lie, but you need to use sentences that they will interpret in a way that they will calm down because they'll think you're in alliance. So what you can say is, I can see how you think that, but I'm wondering, it seems to me it's this way, rather than saying, no, you're wrong. That's not it. It's this. Okay. So Henry, I can see. I'll give, I'll, I'll give you an example. Yeah, had, give me an example. Because I, I had a client at a company who had a guy who was making some, uh, his boss was making errors in the profit and loss sheet. The numbers were, on, were wrong and Ooh. it was serious. His boss was wrong. And he came in because he was like an accountant type guy. And he, he, if he had done it wrong, he would have said, look, the numbers are wrong. These are the right numbers. And the few times he had done that in the past, he got attacked, he got bullied, wrong numbers were sent out and he got blamed. Ooh. Okay. So he got smart. He was coached by somebody, we won't say who. And <laughs> <laughs> he went in the next time. And what he said, his, he said, the numbers don't match. And the boss said something like, well, my numbers are right. And he said, I can see how you think that, but help me think this through. I'm looking at it this way. And according to what I see, the numbers go like this, 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 this. How do I think about that? So what he did was he laid out the correct numbers, but he never said the boss was wrong. He said, I don't understand the difference here. Mm -hmm. He laid it out, the boss saw it, and this is what will be predictable. 
they will take what you did and take credit for it and change one little thing and say it was their idea. Because instinctively the boss saw, oh, those numbers were right. And he said, well, I guess we could use those, but I want to frame it this way. And he tweaked a little bit thing and he changed the numbers and the right numbers went out. Got it. Okay. But, I, yeah. but the accountant positioned himself so that he was not a threat to the survival of the big boss. And and I'm talking power survival. here. Yeah, it, it's, it's, a, it's a survival reaction that I had right. lived with with my so, former husband. So you know, you're people describing might think it beautifully. That, people might think that this is, you know, way up there and theoretical. It's not. Every person hearing this now has had the experience when you're with someone, something in your gut flips or you're aware of the, or the hair on the back of your neck stands up. Something happens where you know you're either being manipulated or you're, or you're connecting. We all have that ability to sense what's going on with us with another person. And the question is, how much do we pay attention to it or not? Okay, so the emotional guidance about. system. You're talking That's about getting more in touch with your own innate emotional guidance system. Absolutely. And if something feels wrong, knowing that the first thing to do is get still. That's and right. the one thing not to do is challenge. Exactly. Beautifully said. It. Beautifully said. Okay. And when you get still, the very next step is, what's my one next best move here that's not going to trigger the attack? So when you were talking what do I about... Choose to do? What do I choose here? Yeah. So the one sentence is, I can see how you think that. If you are asking to get something done, you go to that person. And if, it's, if you're presenting it in a yes or no format, they'll say no, because they have to control. They won't say yes to something that you came up with. So for example, if you want to uh, go somewhere at a certain time, mm -hmm. you come to them with two plans, both of which are okay with you. I'd like to do this at this time, or I could do it this way and this way. What do you think? Which do you think is better? Now, let's say you really wanted choice A. What you would do is slightly emphasize B a little bit more to give them the sense that they are in control and making a decision. Because if you really want B, they'll choose A, just to be in control. They don't know this. You must not tell them. Do not shame them. You must have, and this is hard to imagine, but this is really true. You need to have compassion for that difficult person because they are suffering. They're living a miserable life and they are that way because they have suffered and they have wounds that they haven't healed and overcome. And that is the source of all of that bad behavior. Now, it does not in any way, shape or form excuse the bad behavior. Yeah. So having compassion doesn't mean you say it's okay. Having compassion means you don't attack back. You keep your own dignity your own, with your own dignity intact. You make your own choices and you keep your head held high and you negotiate your own way without getting caught in the power game. Over time, they will stop attacking you as often or as much because they're not getting the energy. They're not getting the juice from you. They're not getting that. Okay. Over, winning. over time is a really critical piece here because yeah. the first time, time you go to change this behavior, they're going to um, react and it may be even more than, in my experience, it might be even more than the way they reacted in the past because all of a sudden they're a little confused. You're not giving them back the emotional response. That right, they and therefore they can't control you. Yeah, so they, 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 they might spasm they on you. And this is, right. um, yeah, the, the concept of an extinction burst is how it was explained mm -hmm. to me. And it's about expect that they're going to go a little bit spastic. Mm -hmm. on the, as if you calm down and they start to realize they can no longer control you, they can no longer get a predictable response from you, right. expect that they're going to try harder at first. At until, first. Yeah, at first. But if you over time consistently present mm -hmm. to them that you're not threatening them and you're not attacking them, they will either decide that you're not worth controlling you know, which mm -hmm. is not necessarily a negative. It doesn't mean they don't yeah. think well of you or they'll kind of instinctively feel like, well, you're, you're on, you're in their camp, you're on their side because you're not opposing. Therefore, in their minds, you're with them. Therefore, 
they will attack you less and less often or less and less severely. Now, here's the key with a difficult person, you will never not have one of those situations every now and again. You can have a good relationship, maybe 90, 95% of the time, but there will be at least five to 10% of the time when they're just going to blow and, and attack you and do their, their thing. And when those happen, it will be so many fewer times that you can say, oh boy, they're really in it today and not get hooked by it. Even if you're ticked off, get ticked off privately. Go somewhere yeah, else yeah. and say, I hate when they do that, you know, <laughs> but not in front of them. It, it really is about getting back in touch with yourself. What is it that I'm feeling? What is it that I'm wanting? And where do I need it now? I, I, I just, yesterday I took a big foam roller like you would use to loosen your back and went into my bedroom and went, because <laughs> I had just, I'm not taking it. Yeah. The good news is I beat up the bed with a foam roller. I didn't take it out on anybody else. Right. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Right. And, and here's another key phrase you can use, but you have to mean it. You have to say it truthfully and you have to understand what you're really saying. I'm so sorry you feel that way. Now, in your mind, what you're saying is, I'm sorry you feel that way because you're being really terrible. <laughs> you're really abusing me. I'm sorry you feel that way because you're just miserable. You know, you're miserable to be around, but you're not saying all the rest. You're allowed to think it. But I'm sorry you feel that way. They will hear that like, oh, I agree with you. They will reinterpret that as alignment and agreement, and they'll calm down a little bit. So you can truthfully say, I'm sorry you're upset. That doesn't mean you're agreeing with them. I'm sorry you're upset doesn't mean you're right. Another thing you can say, if they're really at you, a difficult person is really at you, and you just can't stand it, and you can't think clearly, it's very important to be able to say, look, when you speak that way, I shut down. Can we take a little breather? If we can talk about it quietly, I want to hear what you have to say. Mm -hmm. But I can't hear it when you talk to me in that tone. Because I shut down. Not because, because they're wrong, right. but because I shut down. You've got it exactly. You're putting it on you. You know, it's an Asian concept, okay. sort of bow lower. Yeah. Put it on you. It's true. I'm sorry you feel that way. And I'm going to be bluntly honest with everybody. When it came to learning these skills and having to be so present and mindful to these in a relationship, it was better to end the relationship. In some and cases, it is. Because and, and so, that's yeah, very yeah. important to note. Now, if you're a young person, you may not be able to end the relationship if it's a family member. If you've got parents or an older sibling or even a younger sibling who's uh, really treating you very badly and you can't get out of the family situation yet, what you need to do as a young person is keep your own dignity and realize it's just a matter of time and it's their dysfunction, it's not you. It's That's their stuff telling. that's yeah. making them behave that way and not you. And seek support outside the family. Get a teacher, a counselor, a coach, a friend, somebody, another friend's parents, somebody somewhere who will support you to realize that if you can't deal with a difficult person and you can't get out, it doesn't mean you have to suffer forever. It's just a matter of time till you will be able to get out, get support in the meantime. It's not Getting you. Support. You're not wrong. You're not defective. It's the other person's stuff. Don't take it in. And if I am being the difficult person, mm -hmm. I can just be a little more aware of the impact that I have on other people. Absolutely. The, the hard thing about that is one of the reasons people are difficult people is because they are unable and or unwilling to notice the impact of what they say and do on other people. They don't ever mm -hmm. connect authentically. They're in their own bubble. My world, win or die, my way or the highway, that's it. Me, 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 me. If you notice, again, this is not a political statement. This is an example of behavior. Um, the, the current president has a habit when he's asked about something that hasn't gone well. He changes, the conver he changes what he's talking about and says he did something great. When people ask him about how many people are dying in the pandemic, instead of saying an empathic statement like, yes, it's terrible, you know, it's awful and we're doing our best to do this and this and this. 
He'll say, no, we're the best country in the world and we've handled it the best. He completely dismisses the pain and suffering that's being present to him. That's an example of somebody who for many different reasons can't connect authentically with the feelings of other people. Most difficult people cannot connect to other people's feelings. They do not have empathy and they don't observe their impact on other people. They really are oblivious. They're the oblivious and in their own bubble. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so this is really good news when you can accept it. And yes. it's really bad news if you're gonna argue with it. Right. Okay, I mean, this is, this is I'm, I'm just gonna call the, name the elephant in the room. The elephant in the room is that if you accept that a difficult person is the way they are because they're scared and they've right. been scared for a really long time, they're totally unaware of the impact they have on other people. Right. They are rarely able to connect authentically right. with someone. And if you're in a personal relationship with them, those are unreasonable expectations. Yes, except for example, if it's a marriage over time, over time, that person will soften and will connect. Uh, I'm a big believer in redemption and growth. And there are many difficult people I have worked with who have had major changes and became really wonderful, not difficult people, and just had difficult moments, which every human being has. It is possible when someone sees the benefit, like Henry got the positive rewards for not doing bad doggy behavior, when people see that they are appreciated, that people want to be around them, that they benefit by changing their behaviors, they're very motivated to do so. And they become really wonderful people to be around rather than difficult people. It is possible and it happens, but there are those who won't. And you need to know when to walk away. Mm. The first time we had this conversation, you shared something with me that absolutely changed my thinking oh, about detail. difficult people. <laughs> And what you said was that an evolved, difficult person mm -hmm. becomes a really good leader. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that was, that was like, really? Mm -hmm. it, it, Cause it had not dawned on me. Mm -hmm. I mean, just accepting the fact that they were difficult was a revelation in and of itself for me because I like to change things. Mm -hmm. um, I like to solve the problem mm -hmm. and there was no solution in working with a difficult person. Well, the solution is of me. I had take to care of it. yourself. Yeah. Exactly. It was right. all inside work. We all have narcissistic traits. We all do. And you have to have healthy narcissism to say, I can lead you. I have to have a balanced sense of narcissism to sit here and say, hey, Jackie's audience, I can teach you this. Let me lead you. Let me show you some things that will help you. I have to be able to say that as a leader, or as a teacher or guide or a counselor with my clients. So it, we, but, and the greatest world leaders have to be narcissists because you have to have a really strong sense of self to say, I can do this, I can lead. When it becomes unbalanced and self-centered is when we have the destructive people. Now, if people are interested in um, learning more about this, when they, uh, if you go to the lesliaustin.com forward slash gift, you get the gift. There will be an option on that page as a special free gift Ooh. to schedule a half hour complimentary conversation with me. There's a, oh, awesome. there. I have a very limited number of slots because I'm really busy these days. So there's only a few open, but if people want to have a free initial consult to see if they think they want to do some work or not, we can talk about it, see if we're a good fit or not, or maybe I can give you a little bit of advice in the half hour if that would help. So there's just a very few, but if it'll be on that page where you opt in for the Lion Tamer's checklist. Lion Tamer is a name one of my clients gave me years ago because I was dealing with narcissists. So <laughs> there we go. How to tame the lion in your life. Yeah. You know, and so I put the link in the chat and it'll be in the show notes for anyone watching this later on. Great. And Leslie, thank you so much for yeah. coming on and sharing your wisdom, your perspective bringing us into this new space where we don't have to argue with no. reality anymore. No. We all really need to connect and support ourselves in the way our world feels right now with all the crazy things that are going on. 
connecting with each other and supporting each other and being positive with each other and reaffirming our humanity and our connection to each other, really supporting each other is crucial. So you be the leader, you be the first one to do it and you see what responses you get, your life will get better. Yeah, and so we've got a comment in the chat that it's hard to support scared people and it does require a more um, robust sense of self and when everybody around you is scared, which is what they're talking about in the, um, and they're in Italy, and you know every single country is having their own challenge with how do you handle the fear. Right. So I'm glad you brought that up. Leslie, you will be active in the Facebook group for the VIPs, and so you can interact with her there. And please take advantage of her free gift. And Barbara, thank you for uh, your comments and Nadine, thank you for your comments because it is difficult and it's especially difficult for teens. And it's difficult for me to end this session because it has been so engaging and so great. It's always but a pleasure. I, always a pleasure, Jackie. And thank you very much for inviting me. You're very, very welcome. All right. I am out of here. We'll be back.